good morning, I'm Pam. We're on 427 King Street West in Gananoque. We've been here about three years, so I'm still learning. <laughs> Most of the flower beds were laid out and all the rocks, but um, I've changed quite a bit. So if we look up here, we've got a, a general view of the what I call the rock, the rock wall, which uh, abuts the driveway. And uh, we'll go and look at the details later on. Um, this, was, this bed was already here, but when you see the zinnias, that was all pachysandra because there was an old tree here, it was all shade. So when the tree went uh, dead, I pulled up the pachysandra and then I was faced with a problem of what to do to fill in for now. So I put pots of petunia, which I already had, and then I tossed in some seedlings of zinnia. I didn't know what colour or how tall, but as you can see, they've done, they've done pretty well. So maybe walk over. Oh, this is um, an area where I'm growing iris. I moved all my iris from the shade at the back because they were never flowering. And I've got patches here and patches there, some of them given to me, and they flowered quite nicely. Uh, and to fill in the gaps I planted morning glory just to let it spread and I think we're going to get some flowers in a few days. So let's go over to the rose bed. I dug this area for a road bed a couple of years ago. It's about the only full sun that you need for roses and I have about eight David Austin roses. Unfortunately, as gardens go, I cut them back and although they're all in bud, there are very few flowers now. It's called the Lady of Shalott and it's very fragrant as well. Um, you might get a shot of all the buds on the others, so, so they're all different colours. The company that I buy them from replaces, if you lose up to five years, they replace roses. So these two sad little plants here are new ones and they've taken and I'm hoping for flowers next year. This is, um, this is one of the perennial geraniums that I really love. It's called Roseanne. I think most people are familiar with it. And uh, it blooms right through the summer, which I need for some colour in this big bed once the spring flowers are gone. So we'll see some more of those. But these hostas were planted when the tree was here, so they were planted in the shade. But look, they're doing really well in the sun. Surprise, surprise. There's always a surprise in the garden. This uh, white verbena is uh, an annual that I use quite a lot to fill in this area during, during the summer and a bit of deadheading and it, it gives a bit of lift and we'll find it throughout this part of the garden. So things like the Artemisia are, are really drought tolerant. And this is um, this yellow plant is Corridalis. It's a, a native, and it seeds itself. And I've just let it grow because it gives me a bit of more colour. Uh, I've also planted some in the back in the shade. This is my big success for this month, which is uh, Japanese anemones. Uh, you need something to lift at this time of the year when there isn't much new, and these have certainly done very well. You see some more of the blue, the blue um, Roseanne geranium here and there. I cut them back so that they're, they're growing up again. There's, uh, there's more of the white verbena. I sort of tuck it in here. This, you can see, is a big slope. 
and it's quite a challenge gardening you know you you work climbing up and you work climbing down and hope you don't fall <laughs> in, in the process so I kept it fairly weed free the, there's lots of this um, euonymus which was already here and it holds the soil pretty well I have to keep cutting it back and this, I'm, I planted some more horses just to give some yellow colour here. So now we can go around the back and have a look at the uh, pond and the rock garden. I started growing a few vegetables this year, the sort of victory garden syndrome, although it's really very shady. So these are my scarlet runner beans. Um, the only place I could put a trellis was here, and they're sitting on a wall, so they're all in containers, which is a bit limiting. They have to be watered twice a day. However, they are flowering, and if you get a magnifying glass, you can actually see a few beans. <laughs> this is a sort of memory of my old dad, who was a champion scarlet runner bean grower in England. Uh, I'm going to move the idea over into the sun later on next next year. So this is the first attempt at a vegetable garden. We pulled up a lot of old hostas and we have Asian greens, arugula, second sowing of spinach, uh, tomatoes, quite a few herbs and some peppers. The chipmunks have done better than we have on this but the tomatoes and the herbs have been absolutely wonderful and those Asian greens are kind of nice in a salad you have to pick up the ones that haven't been chewed. I bring the house plants out, of course, during the summer, and this particular hibiscus is really enjoying itself. It was a, an offshoot from a 35-year-old plant from a friend, so like a lot of things in the garden, they have a history, and you remember people through the plants that you got from them. So she is really doing beautifully. Our property abuts onto a 17 acre heritage woodland called Ferncliff, which we're allowed to walk in. So um, it's very difficult to know where the boundary is. We don't have a, a survey, but we have an old shed back there. And behind this fence, which we put up to deter the deer, we keep our composter and our leaf pile and all the work area to try and keep it neat. And this area here, the whole of this garden, which I call the East Garden, is mainly bedrock. Um, so we have a narrow border of soil and I'm thinking of widening it, but <laughs> the thought <laughs> terrifies me. And this rather nice display of tiger lilies, they, they just arrived. They seeded themselves, or they don't seed, they're little bulbs. There was a couple last year, and this year they've done really well. I was hoping they would hang on for this picture. I uh, also have peonies in this area because it's quite, uh, it's got a, a sort of a, a window where some sun comes in, so I have different colors of, of peonies here. Right behind all this, it's uh, wild lilac and wild, um, oh, what's the word? I knew I'd forget a word, honeysuckle. And um, we have to keep those boughs trimmed because again we get a lot of shade and a lot of seedlings. But it makes a nice backdrop for the garden. And then the rest of this border, uh, we sort of take what comes. I've got some flatty code on there. Um, the pink echinacea did very well. And this is a, a tulip magnolia, which bloomed beautifully in the, in the spring. And uh, other things around here, just as I say, we take what comes. <laughs> I planted a lot of larkspur, but the rabbits ate it. That's a fun thing about being next to a forest. <laughs> you've got deer, you've got foxes, and lots of birds, which is great. And um, the chipmunks that have taken up residence in the, in the garden. I 
try and keep some colour and texture in the foliage here. So I've got heuchera there and uh, over there. And uh, there's two uh, Korean lilacs, miniature Korean lilacs, which are nice in, in the spring. And they're very fragrant, which is coming out here at the end of May. It's just heavenly. Um, lots of uh, miniature iris. Uh, this one I actually got from from Elaine. I bought it from Elaine and it spread everywhere. She talked about it in her garden. And some um, daylilies and I'm gradually adding a few more daylilies because they seem to do all right here. And uh, over here lots of bergamot. Uh, and this, I don't know if I can get close up. This is one of my favorite annuals. It's called Larkspur and it's the annual version of delphinium. The flower is much more delicate than delphinium. Normally it seeds itself all over the place, but as luck would have it, this year it didn't. So I've only got just a few very sparse ones. And I got this seed 20 years ago from a, a friend in, uh, who came from Europe, so I don't want to lose it. So a lot of my friends have got the same plant and they're going to give me seed. And I scatter it in the spring. But it's a delightful flower and a lovely colour at this time of the year, setting off with the purple of the bergamot. Now this is the area that really sold us this property. The, uh, the rock, or hillside as I call it, and the pond um, is just charming and so restful. But it's a little bit of a challenge because there isn't much soil amongst the rocks. What soil is there is very shallow. Plus the trees take a lot of the moisture and the nutrients. So I've had to find things that really work. Um, if you look beyond the pond, I have quite a few of this blue Teremia. It's a, an annual, but it's shade tolerant, so I've got it dotted all around. And I also added quite a few pots of plants, potscaping, mar I think Marjorie Mason Harris called it. So they're mostly um, in patterns, and I kept them to the colours that I like, not really bright red, just whites and cool colours. So we had pinks and whites in pots all over the place. And uh, Here's the pond itself. We have, um, we have resident frogs that conveniently sit on the lily pads. And the lilies uh, so far haven't flowered, but you can also see the uh, iris, the, it was a yellow water iris that I got from Wanda Monks, and that, uh, that flowered beautifully. And the one beside it is a pointed area um, pickerel weed, and it has a blue spike, and those are new, so they haven't flowered yet. That's a native, that's a native aquatic plant. This is the wine bar. <laughs> Around uh, sundown at time, it's a nice place to sit with a cool glass of wine and watch the water and listen. I don't know if you're picking up the sound of the water, but it's, it's just lovely. And the frogs, the metal frogs sitting there were friends, friends from Georgia gave me. Okay, two years ago this whole area was torn up to rebuild the steps and the retaining wall. So all the plants went, all the soil went. I saved what I could and put it all back uh, early in 19. And it's done quite well. It's very shady, which was shade from the house, so it's solid shade. And you can see how <laughs> the lady's mantle is reaching out. <laughs> For the, for the sun, but it's quite a pleasant appearance and the, the ferns do well and the astilbes do well and I have uh, a lot of talia daffodils or narcissi in the spring. It's just a mass of white talias which are fragrant. And uh, I also, when my son built this railing for us, we used cedar. So I incorporated some cedar containers. And over here you can 
see the um, what I've put in the the box there. Instead of using uh, an ordinary garden geranium, I used a perennial geranium. It's called Anne Thomas, and I really love the way it sort of drapes. Very, it's very quiet and just needs a little dead heading, and it's flowering all summer. So that's um. Now I'm going down the steps here, which my son built. You can see all the white, the green foliage of, of the trailing flocks, which is a bright pink statement in May. And everybody remembers the flocks, it's all the way down. But once it's finished flowering, that's it. So I, that's why I try and bring in some, some other colour and some more variety during, during the summer. So this was all replanted as well. So that is what I'm doing with my garden. And thank you for your interest. I hope you enjoy it. And you can drive past anytime and have a look and drop by and say hello. Thank you.